interested in football away from the glitz and glamour of Premiership football, I keep the time to take you on a journey to Talca Park, Dublin. Hi guys, so here I'm in Drakondra, which is a suburb in the north county of Dublin. This is where Shelburne play their home games at Talca Park. Uh, the capacity of Talca Park is 9,861. Shelburne bought this ground from Dublin Corporation in 1989. Talk Park became the first all-seizure stadium in Ireland, in the Republic of Ireland, um, when Shelburne redeveloped it. They put a lot of money into it. The first live televised game was in the mid-90s as well, from, and that was in Talca Park between Shelburne and Derry City in the Premier Division in the Irish League. So that that's something that Talca Park kind of uh, has a hold over other stadiums in Ireland. Shelburne arguably are the second biggest club in Ireland as well. They've... Only Shamrock Rovers have won more trophies than Shelburne. So, you know, it's sad to see what's become of Shelburne lately. What I mean by that is they've spent nine of the last 11 years in the second tier of Irish football, the first division. The Premier Division being the highest division in Ireland. Shelburne had unbelievable success in the 90s and 2000s in particular, uh, winning many league titles, FAI Cups, etc., which is um, like the FA Cup in England, basically. Um, but in Europe is where they really produced some excellent performances, notably 2004 when they drew nil nil at home to Deportivo La Coruña. Deportivo were a great side at the time, they got the semi-finals of the Champions League in 2003 actually, it was just the season before that. But after all the success, it was only three years later, 2007, when they lost the Premier Division licence, unfortunately they lost it due to overspending. Um, was the success worth it? Many will say it was. But they did lose their license to it in 2007, um, which relegated them to the first division. Nine of their last 11 years now have been in the first division and they're struggling to get back from that. Tonight they face Bray Wanderers in the first division here in Talca Park. They're top of the table, five points clear of draw the United, just 12 games to go. Can they get back to the Premier Division? Can they take another step in doing that? Let's go and find out. So lads just heading up to Talca Park now. Um, just crossing over here. We're not getting knocked down, you know. Bit of traffic about. Still a bit early though. Welcome to Talca Park lads, there's just a sign there. How are you? There's a few supporters walking by there now. <laughs> as you can see. Excellent pitch to be fair. Um, the facilities might be the best but look at that for a pitch. Alright lads, just a view from the main stand again there at uh, Talca Park. Very windy. Um, that's the far end of the field. Bray Wanderers players just warming up. Zoom in a bit there. And as you can see the other far stand which is kind of like the away stand really um, some young Shelburne fans wearing tracksuits and the keeper being put through his paces there not too long to kick off now though Shelburne team there lads. It's a 9,000 capacity here lads as I said but it's likely that will only have, I'd say, 2,000 or something like that in you know, this game, I'd imagine. First division game as well. Um, you know. I don't know. 
Half time here, it's Shelburne, uh, nil, Bray Wanderers nil. Uh, scrappy enough first half. Um, Bray Wanderers started off the better side. Um, Shelburne came out of traps very tentatively, to be fair. Um, second half of the half, Shelburne got into it, got into a rhythm, they started passing the ball better. A few half chances, no real saves for the keeper to make though. Um, at the other end, near enough stroke of half time. Bray Wanderers for force to save from the goalkeeper, so um, yeah, I don't know if Shelburne are a bit nervous. Five points clear at the top of the table, M might be a bit nervous coming into it. Bray aren't a bad side, they're fifth in the league. Um, interesting second half, very windy here though. You know, it seems, you know, a lot of the crosses going in, probably a bit lofted and need to be lowered. Shelburne do look dangerous from crossing the ball here, but um, yeah, I'll just show you some half time facilities now. Well, as these are the toilet facilities, obviously can't bring in for obvious reasons, but um, as you can see, you know, it's not um, Old Trafford or Anfield, you know. In fairness, it's um, quite modest. So that's that basically. So lads, second half's just starting. The stadium announcer said there's 1,600 people here, so that gives you an idea of, you know, general t attendances at these games. The only thing is, 1,600 people here, but these are all diehards. These are free kick for Shelburne there. These are all diehards. You know, you, you go to the English Premiership, you go to Chelsea, Man United, Arsenal, whoever it is, you get your 50, 60,000. You know. Good 25% of them are out for the day, let's be honest about it. These are diehards, they're not here to watch, you know, brilliant footballers in action. They're here to support their club and support their team, regardless of standard of football or quality of football. Right, free kick, Shelburne, a dangerous position here, lads. Just on the right-hand side there of the screen, you'll see two at the ball. Swinger, defence handles it well, and Brave done that well all night to be fair. Um, two sets of defenders very good in the air. Shelburne probably have to find, try and find another way. Bray 
they definitely turn up the heat in the second half here. They've kind of been the better side. Shelburne gone back into nervous mode, I think, and Bray playing with a bit of freedom here, but still nil nil. 20 minutes gone, lads, in the second half here, and to be honest, Shelburne are camped in their own half. Uh, Bray are putting them under a lot of pressure. Still not forcing their way through. A few chances here and there. Um, it's mostly Bray. Shelburne just camped in the first half at the moment, and I'd say we've got. Got about 30 minutes roughly left here. They're looking far sharper now and very confident, Brain. Here they come again, actually. Shelburne 6 7. Ooh! Another effort there. Shelburne are creaking a little bit here, um, but still nil nil. Injury time there lads, Shelburne almost scoring an injury time, uh, first win chance second half actually to be honest, still nil nil. So lads finish Shelburne nil, Bray Wanderers nil, in the end the draw maybe fair result, Bray probably edge in second half, they looked hungrier for us, Shelburne a little bit nervous I think, not their best performance, uh, Bray were very dangerous on the counter attack, but um, uh, ultimately a nil nil draw, I uh, believe draw the United one, which puts them, keeps them three points out of Shelburne at the top of the table. Uh, or keeps Shelburne three points out of them at the top of the table, so um, a bit of sign of nerves tonight from Shelburne possibly, it's hard to know, Bray aren't a bad side though either, so, um, and they have playoff aspirations as well, so um, that's the match review anyway. It's a crowd filtering out now lads. As I said, only 1,600 at the game. That's what you get in games like this. Dressing rooms, just a quick peek there, lads. Club shop, lads. Basically a cabin pack. Sorry, you're alright, go on ahead. Basically, it's a cabin pack. Um, you know, it's not uh, Manchester United's club store. We'll just go in and have a quick look though here. Some jerseys there, lads. Home jerseys, away jerseys. Tracksuit tops. Some mugs and hats. Shelburne flags. How are you? How are you? <laughs> Some retro jerseys there. Right guys, just back from the game. Uh, just home now. So it finished Shelburne nil, Bray Wonders nil. Uh, Shelburne now are three points above Drogheda United after they won tonight. Um, I'll talk briefly about the match itself. Um, you know, second half definitely Bray Wanderers were the better side. They were more slick. They were quicker. Um, they looked a little bit hungrier actually. Uh, Shelburne may have been a little bit edgy. Uh, Vanny was going to pinch it. It looked like Bray were going to pinch it. Ultimately, uh, draw was probably a fair result. I wouldn't say it's two points drop for Shelburne. Yes, Bray are a decent side as well. Um, but one thing to note, I went to the game tonight not as a fan. I'm not a Shelburne fan, I'm not as a Bray Wonder, I'm not a Bray Wonders fan. Um so you're looking at things differently, you see things from a different perspective. And you know, I was looking, but I was more focused on what was going on around the surroundings, what what's the facilities like, you know what I mean? What's all that kind of stuff like, you know? <coughs> You know, it's not obviously high level football. Um, it's the first division in Ireland as well. So the announcers have said, I think I said it earlier on in the video, but a thousand, was it over a thousand people at the game? Uh, in the Premier Division, you'd expect a few more, all right. But, um, you know, these people are, they are diehard supporters. It's in their blood. Um, they don't go to these games because of the facilities, certainly not. I mean, I went into the men's toilet, for example, and there was one tap and it was cold. Um, there was no hand sanitizer left. 
Um, I obviously couldn't show you the toilets for obvious reasons. I showed you just the outside. Um, but none of these things really matter to these people that go to these games. They just enjoy the games. They support their team. There's more of a bond, I think, as well. You know, if you compare it to Premiership or top-level football, you don't see, you know, the egos, you know, quite as much or anything like that. People, players, if they are, are on... You know, they're not on high wages. They're, some of them aren't even on a wage, you know. So depending on what division you're talking about and that kind of thing. So, you know, the players are more... Um, I don't know if I want to say effort, put more effort into it. But um, there's definitely a general honesty to what they do compared to... For example, like, you know, Bray had tiny support. I mean, 50 people maybe. Um, but the players came over, showed the respects. Uh, one or two of the players were talking to some of the supporters. They probably knew them. Um, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know, you just these kind of games, it's a, it's a different thing. You smell the grass, um, literally. Um, you know, the stands aren't the best generally. They're a bit run down. Uh, and this is Kalka Park, which would be one of the biggest stadiums, really, to be honest. Might not necessarily be the best. Um, there's a few other ones, but um, it's one of the biggest, I would say. Um, you know, and you're just trying to feel that what it is, you know, that heart of football, really, so to speak. And you can see how passionate the fans are around you. You can see how into it they are, how important it is to them. They're as passionate as a Manchester United or Liverpool fan, like you know. Um, there's no doubt about that about their club regardless of the quality of the players the quality of the players is almost irrelevant um you know if you compare it to the very highest level now um of player um you know you look at the club shop uh nice little neat club shop it's not your manchester united or your real madrid or your chelsea mega store um you know um it's it's you could nearly say an innocence behind behind it all, um, and um, did I enjoy the experience? I did enjoy the experience. Uh, the match itself, though, finished nil nil, which uh, which can take a gloss out of it a bit. And uh, Shelburne, I don't think we're at their best tonight. Uh, Bray got caught more confident in the second half, so the match experience, um, even for this level, probably wasn't the best match. You know what I mean in the world. Um, but the all round experience was definitely interesting and um, you know something you know we'll go maybe explore more go into depth more um, and do different things different features we, we'll see how we go um, there's going to be a lot of content now coming on the YouTube channel um, myself there's different people from different countries around the world as well that are going to be reporting on different different games, different leagues, different structures and things like that. So, um, um, yeah, I mean, if you enjoy this experience, um, I'm sure we'll get better as well at it. Um, do feel free to like and subscribe. And um, thanks for watching. Cheers. Good luck.